it's so interesting that you mentioned about uh, bat- about batteries being made in house by tata because uh, the batteries are definitely one of the most fascinating things about the car and uh, with your permission i would like to talk a little more about the battery pack it's a 30 kilowatt hour battery pack and it's one of the first liquid cooled electric packs in india let me ask you how does this liquid cooling system work exactly and is there any special uh, services or anything that you have to do to change the coolant the customer i mean uh, lithium ion batteries uh, while they are extremely high density batteries they also have the uh, because it's an electrochemical reaction that keeps taking place at the time that you charge and discharge these batteries uh, the electrochemical reaction can be exothermic or is exothermic which which means it uh, emits some amount of heat now right. uh, and batteries tend to operate the best batteries tend to obtain uh, operate most optimally when they are in a, a zone which is uh, colloquially called the goldilocks zone uh, it it means that uh, batteries uh, uh, do not like temperatures beyond uh, uh, 40 degrees centigrade and they also don't like temperatures below about uh, 10 15 degrees centigrade now okay. uh, we, uh, there could be compositions depending upon uh, if you wanted a special application but that's that's what uh, is the overall uh, thing that we would need to have so if you stay within the goldilocks zone uh, then what happens is uh, you have a, a better uh, charging efficiency you have a better consistency of charging you also have a better life uh, in terms of the number of cycles that the batteries can put in so all put together it gives you a fairly robust fairly durable piece of uh, 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 a charge charge mechanism or a charge device as we would call it and that's what we would always want to have so okay. uh, we decided that in a country like india for example where ambient temperatures can soar as high as 45 degrees centigrade and then if you are trying to extract heat out of the battery Uh, the battery temperatures could uh, uh, go beyond that it's very important for us to have some sort of cooling and uh, therefore we decided that we would do a liquid cool a liquid cooled pack uh, what happens because of the liquid cooled pack is um, so you have a, a compressor and the compressor while it is uh, cooling the internal cabin of the car a part of that compressor uh, capacity can also when need be Uh, directed towards cooling the pack and it essentially uh, acts like a uh, it it uh, the refrigerant is used like a chiller to uh, cool the water down which can then be circulated within the batteries and uh, maintain the temperature of the uh, batteries uh, at a uh, optimal temperature which we as i said called the goldilocks zone so right. I, i think this is what uh, was one of the decisions that we took and this has helped us a lot because it uh, enables us to maintain the batteries at in the optimum specified uh, zone uh, thereby as i said enhancing the uh, life of the batteries the charge consistency of the battery and uh, also providing a optimum range uh, to our customers right you mentioned uh, just now about india's uh, temperature and i think tata did this uh, series of uh, famous uh, videos with milan soman i where the drove to ladakh uh, and it was just fascinating seeing the nexon ev there you know in those cold climates and i uh, i really like to know how the cooling system works uh, in cold climates uh, in the himalayas and so on yeah so uh, uh, what happens is uh, y- when you go to very very low temperatures and uh, when i'm saying very very low temperatures it is uh, beyond uh, minus 7 minus 10 uh, then uh, you you would probably need uh, and if the vehicle is uh, standing in the outside and the ambient condition for a fairly long period of time the batteries may have cooled down to a, a very low temperature and you might need something uh, some sort of a, a external heating to come in but in most cases what happens is that because batteries tend to uh, emit heat and in in the process of discharging they will attain optimum temperature by themselves and at that time all that you have to do is to not allow the coolant to circulate uh, so for for a place like india where uh, you know in in some other presentations i have explained that we we lie in a, a fairly warm arid zone uh, mm-hmm. except for some upper reaches of the uh, mountain ranges in the north uh, mm-hmm. but A, a large portion of our country is a uh, warm uh, could be hot arid uh, zone and therefore the cooling emphasis on cooling system is 
So we need to cool down the batteries rather than to heat the batteries. So to your question, uh, how do the batteries perform in, in those uh, uh, elevated uh, uh, altitudes and lower temperatures? I think they, fa they function fairly well and uh, 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 they, they do not show any sign of uh, distress. Uh, we've observed in the EV community that after five or so years, um, or even earlier actually in some cases, uh, one or two packs in the, one or two cells in the battery pack tend to get weak because of uh, improper charging habits or whatever other reasons. And electric car owners don't find out about the problem until it's way too late, until they're, they're driving the car and it just stalls on the road. And which is obviously, it's very time consuming to have it towed and it's also embarrassing. And uh, uh, overall, it's just not a good look for the uh, car company. And uh, I was wondering if you could give us some insight about how Nexon, uh, Tata is handling, uh, you know, the Nexon EV's battery cell monitoring and what proactive action you can take to ensure that cu customers don't have such bad experiences. Uh, so that's a very valid uh, question and this is something which is a very uh, real life uh, experience kind of a question. But uh, what I would say is there are a couple of things that we need to do upfront and uh, those uh, things have been uh, uh, done in the Nexon EV as well. So first and foremost, if you can maintain the uh, overall specification of the cells within a very narrow band, then that's that's such a nice thing to do. The second one is that uh, the moment you have liquid cooling, uh, then it also uh, makes sure that the delta T or the temperature difference between one end of the pack to the other end of the pack are, and by that same logic, uh, it's also one uh, cell to the other cell never exceed a certain value and uh, the liquid cooling ensures that the delta T is maintained within a very narrow uh, band. So what happens is because of this, the, uh, the, the chemical differences that can occur within a cell, which could then lead to one or more cells of a particular module uh, within the battery pack going bad, can be significantly minimized. The other thing is that uh, we, we do a lot of uh, uh, checks on the overall uh, uh, number of cells and the batching and the grading of cells so that uh, all of them are within a uh, within a very uh, narrow band to begin with and then the balancing that we have ensured on this uh, on the pack make sure that uh, the, the the differences don't crop up uh, as the uh, pack starts to age so hmm. overall we've seen a fairly high consistency a fairly high degree of uh, accuracy that the cells will maintain over a large number of cycles uh, mm. And therefore, this shouldn't uh, happen that you get into a situation where uh, one of the cells will abruptly misbehave and uh, you would get into problems. Uh, what we've also said is in order to make sure that all of this remains well, uh, uh, there is a, a internal calibration that keeps going on in the background uh, for the uh, battery uh, cells to work well. And therefore, uh, it's always advisable to do one slow charge. Uh, overnight slow charge uh, a couple of weeks once in a couple of weeks hmm. what, what we call battery balancing yes so it just allows for see what happens is if you're doing constantly if you're doing a fast charge then fast charge is also heating the batteries uh, okay. the, the uh, driving is also heating the batteries so because of fast charge you're putting in a high amount of current uh, at any given point of time because that's the, the only way that you can charge them quickly and therefore mm -hmm. uh, you also don't uh, normally take it up to 100% charge you would probably charge them up to 90% it's like an opportunity charge so mm -hmm. once you allow the batteries to go to 100% it sort of uses those points to calibrate itself and then any uh, any deviations that may have come up they sort of get evened out. Uh, the onboard charger of the, e of the Nexon EV supports 3 kilowatt AC charging Whereas most cars globally offer 7.2 kilowatt AC charging. Uh, yeah. Why was this omitted? Uh, no, so it was not omitted. It was a very, very conscious decision. It was a very, very, it was one of the tough choices that we had to make. And I'll tell you exactly the reason why we made that tough choice. Uh, uh, you know, the 3.2 kilowatt charger uh, is supported with a 15 amp plug, hmm. right? 
and uh, the moment you go to a uh, higher rating charger you would need to uh, put a three phase connection and you would need to uh, get more uh, uh, i mean on the supply side you would need to have more uh, abilities now uh, in in india right. uh, the infrastructure is such that uh, a three phase connection may not be available to everybody of course there are places where three phase connections are available uh, the second thing is the moment you go to a 7.2 kilowatt charger you also need a wall box which adds cost and uh, by the way uh, uh, f- you would save about a couple of hours 3 hours maybe in the overall charging time so uh, how do we how do we give a solution that is capable of not needing the customer to invest more in upgrading his infrastructure and not needing him to pay more for a device that would need to enable that and yet be able to give him the uh, luxury of or freedom of charging it anywhere so this we thought that 3.2 connection works well for the battery size that we have because mm-hmm. an overnight charge gives you a, a, a range of about a week's travel and mm-hmm. uh, therefore it was a very very conscious choice is it possible to upgrade to 7.2 kilowatt for people who want the upgrade who uh, are willing i think i think we've said this uh, we've been asked this uh, earlier also because this mm-hmm. needs a change in the architecture of the car this needs the uh, charger to go to a different spec and uh, so uh, it's not possible to uh, just simply say that uh, this is a box uh, take it and we can fit it on your car and it goes to a 7.2 so right now that's not uh, possible